never vacate. A holiday. The Europeans have this right. You don't give your life so bad that you have to vacate all the time, and all you do is think about vacating. You're doing the wrong thing. Are we having fun while we're working, or at least do we see the larger perspective? Good day, and welcome to the Consultant with Coach podcast. I'm here with my good buddy, Josh. How are you, my friend? Ah, doing great. It's another day. Week three, of, and this is life application on how to calm your mind. So we've been going through books, book report, job application, and then life application. And if anything, with this, hopefully everyone listened to all three weeks of this podcast. But this is the best of all three weeks because right. it's talking life application. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in the book, How to Calm Your Mind? Right. Yep. Now, you have a great uh, scripture application for this. Yeah, what did you come up with? Yeah, Matthew chapter 6, right? Part of uh, Jesus' three, three uh, chapter Sermon on the Mount. Um, so the context there is important. And that's but, golden with this passage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Jesus himself has already talked about this. So some of the stuff in the book is practical, but it's not uh, not new, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus talked about it in uh, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. He says, This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and body more than clothing? Mm. Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit of his height by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Well, we don't even have to do this podcast now. <laughs> I mean, that's such a great... So, Bill on that. Go ahead. Well, great. You quote Jesus, and I have to ad-lib that. You do. That's amazing, though. That's why I but took that. I, I love that. So here, here we're reading this book, How to Calm Your Mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus talking 2,000 years ago, and I can just see as you were reading that how his disciples must have just been freaking out over something. Yeah. And he's like, guys, chill out. Chill out. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Yeah. But we are reading the book, How to Calm Your Mind, right. and the life application. So in addition to the Sermon on the Mount, yep. which I believe is perfect, one of the life applications I got out of this book, and it's not a direct one-to-one -one out of it, but and some of this is, there's another book that I'm reading called The Checklist Manifesto. And basically, wisdom through checklists, what I got out of reading this book is you can make a checklist out of it if you are facing burnout if you are having problems at work or in life or you're stressed out you can use all this great scientific stuff he has in this book to make yourself a checklist a this is what's causing burnout or b this is how to fix it there mm -hmm. are so many golden nuggets in here and so the number one thing i would do with this book is like if i had this and if i was in a Thank God, not now in my in a time of burnout. But next time it happens, mm -hmm. I'd love to look back and say, okay, what's either causing it, mm -hmm. or how am I not de de stressing? Because like we ended up our last podcast, mm -hmm. we need to. Hey, are, are we living a life in analog? Are we stuck in digital? Mm -hmm. Everything. Well, and I think he would even say not to wait till your time in burnout, but actually mm -hmm. be assessing it on a regular basis, be it monthly, weekly. Um, for the purposes of staying, I remember the term, it's called uh, heights of stimulation, right? You have so much you can take, right? And, and you, once you break that ceiling, um, it becomes a problem. And mm -hmm. so the idea would be you don't want to wait, right, till you actually are burned out, but you want to have some regular way you're assessing your own levels of stress, your own levels of burnout, um, where you're at in the Maslax burnout inventory, which we talked about last time, stress inventory we talked about last time, time management we talked about last time, but doing that on a regular basis for yourself, so that you know when you're starting to bump right up against that level that's going to push you into burnout. Mm -hmm. And I, we got a nice pre-release copy of this book. If I had the hardbound book, which I'll get as soon as it comes out, one of the things I like to do with some of my favorite books is I'll, I'll bookend or I'll, I will use post-it notes in there as kind of reminders. You know, 
he gets into how do you calm your mind, but he has all sorts of great things to do, such as dig, a digital fast. Mm -hmm. And he kind of took that idea from Cal Newport, who was great. Or, you know, you shared a movie with me uh, earlier last year called uh, The Social Dilemma. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. great ideas on how mm -hmm. we can truly calm our mind by either doing something or not doing other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's just some sort of deprivation of, of that stimulation, right, mm -hmm. over some period of time. Time, whether it's 40 hour retreats or I think he even did it for like a month which yeah. is pretty amazing mm -hmm. if I had more time in this that sounds um, like fun he <laughs> yeah no if I didn't have uh, you know life and kids and work and all that other stuff um, but it sounded like a great idea if I'd had more time preparing for this podcast what are you gonna try it for a week mm -hmm. you know to try to bring that experience in but it was uh, time just didn't allow I was thinking about it but it just wasn't something that made sense but it's worth it I think so, I've done it for 48 hours so as you've read the book life application mm -hmm. for Josh on, mm -hmm. on the book how to calm your mind what have you taken out of it you know a few things um, I appreciated his comments on the mindset of more mm. right there's a there's, yeah. a, there's there is a, a mindset of more there there's you know especially the American culture Right, and this kind of mindset of always needing more, never being satisfied, never being content to be a big, be a big theological term that's in scripture a lot. Yeah, the importance of contentedness, um, and, the, and and I think American culture is, is contrary to that, right? It teaches us the very opposite of that, which is which is a problem and a cause of major stress, right? Um, I liked um, in traveling recently for the holiday. Um, I think this is a big one for me, at least. Um, I, I, he said something interesting about the accomplishment mindset. That was the other big mm -hmm. thing in there. I, I think he said, I don't have the quote in front of me, but he mentioned that there's this temptation to see uh, everything as just a checklist to get something done, right? And for me, I have this really strong um, uh, urge when it comes to family stuff. Mm. That is that is particularly stressful for me for lots of reasons. I have a I have a way of sort of viewing it as a checklist to sort of check out emotionally, um, which is probably not healthy, right? I sort of so it was helpful to sort of see that in right up against the holidays to kind of go, oh, like I shouldn't I shouldn't be viewing this entire day as a checklist just to get done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I appreciated that because I think in particular around holidays and stress related to that, um, I, was, I was sort of trying to stay better about being present in the moment. Of family stuff and not just view it as a checklist, even though I kind of still view it as a checklist. But um, I, but, but it was helpful. I have to laugh though at the irony of this book. Here, here's this pr productivity genius mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. writing a book on burnout mm -hmm. because his productivity led him to burnout. Burnout. Right. There's a lot of irony there, right. but and if anything, which I think he would recognize. He would recognize yeah. and. Uh, if anything, those are some of the best books. You don't want to read a book on burnout for someone that's never experienced burnout. Right. I want to read a book on burnout from one of the best productivity geniuses who has hit rock bottom right. because he went too hard. Right. Yeah. But it's still funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sure reflecting on it now, he sort of sees the humor in it. But I can imagine at the time it was ex you know very stressful. Oh, yeah. Am I going to get out of it? Am yeah. I ever going to write another great book again? Yeah, yeah. How am I supposed to write a great book on productivity I thought, when I'm, I I I haven't been figured it out? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I did write um, from a coaching standpoint, uh, not only in my coaching practice, but the coaches who have coached me, and I, it's taken me a number of years to realize this, but in coaching, a good coach uses somatic experiences or mm -hmm. feelings. How does the body feel? And I think it's really, and, and the reason why I think feelings are so important, especially for coaches and business professionals, is we so often will just say, hey, what are the numbers? Did I get things done? Did I get the checklist done? How's the business going? And all of a sudden, you can only push so long until you just hit a wall and can't go forward anymore. Mm -hmm. In my coaching experience, what happens frequently is you don't just hit a wall. There are feelings way before you hit the wall. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned reading books like How to Calm Your Mind is the role of feelings and how the body feels way before you hit the wall. Because you just don't hit the wall. You all of a sudden like, hey, something feels off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and this you know, way, to me. Absolutely. way ahead yeah. of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say, hey, Josh, let's not hit the wall. Yeah. Let's take a Sabbath. Yeah. Or as you're going to do next month, you're going to take a two-day retreat yeah. where you, you're you working on yourself, coming up with great ideas. And you know that by taking two days of someone would say, oh, that's a vacation. It's not a vacation. You're 
taking care of yourself. I'm not vacating anything. You're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in not using that word vacation. Actually, that's another podcast. How about two days of intentional working on your business yeah, for next year? Call it a retreat. Let's do a retreat. Very exactly. Than a vac- vac- retreat, so you can then forge ahead. I never vacate. A holiday. The Europeans have this right. You don't vacate. If your life's so bad that you have to vacate all the time, and all you do is think about vacating, you, you, you're right. You're doing the wrong thing. Well, as Christians, we should be intentional. Exactly. Exactly. No, there's intentionality. And, and this is where even let, let's go back to the devotional. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. So Jesus yeah. is telling us, don't worry about tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's going to worry about itself. Mm-hmm. But I think Jesus would also say, tomorrow, you yeah. you better be working about today. Yeah. Once it's today. Yes. Work on today. Today. Yeah. That's right. The other, th- and not to throw in, I mean, I'm happy to throw in another scripture. I shouldn't say that. Um, another one that I thought of about the importance of, he talked about um, savoring, mm-hmm. right? And it made me think of one we've talked a lot about, um, Ecclesiastes 3, 9 through 14, oh, where the yes. workers gain from their toil, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and, and talks a lot about, you know, basically, you know, being happy, enjoying enjoying life, enjoying the fact that God's taking care of everything. There's nothing you can do to make things different than what God's already done. He's already taken care of everything, mm-hmm. right? And so I think it's really important to, to recognize that God has called us to, to not toil, but redemptive work as an mm-hmm. expression of our worship, an expression of who God has made us to be. But that does not change eternity, doesn't no. change God doesn't particularly change our standing with him there's Mm-mm. nothing we can do to earn or lose some recognition of god's love in our life nothing we can do to change the sacrifice that christ has made for mm-hmm. us right but it's it's truly you know recognizing that we are to be happy and to do good while they live while we live and eat and drink well, and, and, I, and find I satisfaction think, and, and god's not going to say hey josh i really needed you to work harder to complete me because God's right. perfect. Right. Absolutely. Per- well, then why are we working? Well, he's called us to work. But right. I was even thinking as we go into work. And so like, for example, right now, Josh and I, we are working, filming this podcast. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Yeah. He mm-hmm. would say, great. You get to work with your buddy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And wherever we're working at work with whatever we're doing, let's enjoy it. Let's have those time. It's going to be hard sometimes. Yeah. But at the same time, he'll say, hey, let's enjoy it. Let's, you know, and I think that... It, it, when we get to heaven, I do think there's going to be work in heaven, but you will have perfect work in heaven. Yeah, and no I think that and, 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 and is this this is heading into the holidays. You know, when this is going to come out, that mm-hmm. you know, end of the year, New Year's and resolutions. You know, I think the other thing, in, in addition to examining your work, where is it toilsome, stressful? Where can it be better? Where you redeemed? But also just savoring. How do you mm. savor? He talks a lot about savoring. You know that, and that's what I think is that Ecclesiastes passage is about. Is is once you've redeemed to toil and to work. You know, savor, savor the life you have, savor your family, savor the people you work with, savor those moments with kiddos, right? And 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 or just a, the passing conversation with um, a coworker or that person you happen to start up a conversation with at the coffee shop, right? There's there's moments to savor, you know, nature and beauty and um, all those things that that. Can so so the, this book is how to calm your mind, and let me throw the author doesn't at least appear to be a Christian. Uh, but let's let's make this spiritual spiritualized. How did Jesus calm himself, yeah. based on what we read in the Gospels? Yeah. I assume he, he was God. He got stressed just like anyone else. How did he calm himself? Well, I, th- I mean, he he retreated. He prayed, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, as he said in this passage, seek God, seek first His mm. kingdom. Right. So that's that sort of cancels out this accomplishment of more or accomplishment of accomplishment mindset mindset of more. Right. It's this. It's imagining that you're actually seeking something outside yourself right in particular Mm -hmm. who god is and who he's made you to be not right here right now this sort of americanized agenda of of work 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 and save 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 and stress 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 right and you never see jesus said hey i did this therefore i feel great it's always he is always looking to please his father in heaven Mm -hmm. there's something Mm -hmm. in the american like american life we we get wrong we're like it shouldn't be what can Eric do or what can Josh do. Is how can we love others? How can we glorify and enjoy God? It's it's in that that there's actually great joy for us in the process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how do you how would you go about like if you were coaching somebody? How would you introduce that into the stress, the reality? Mm-hmm. It's one thing to say that, right? But then to introduce that into the moment. Uh, the moments that make up our days, in particular the stressful situations, you're talking to an executive. It's great to say those things, but mm-hmm. how do they actually, how do they practically apply that to 
you know, the conflict with their executive team, the the meeting that goes awry, mm-hmm. the client who calls angry, right? Like the, these, there's there's significant stress for, stressors, mm-hmm. right, for leaders in business, and and, and and they're trying to apply this to their life. And how do they do that? So the quick, easy answer that I will say, because I'm not stressed out right now, mm-hmm. is fun. Are we having fun while we're working, or at least do we see the larger perspective? Mm-hmm. There was a. Uh, as, as you know, I'm also a cross-country coach. And last week, the North Carolina State girls team won their second national title in a row. They were interviewing the head coach for North Carolina State, who said the number one factor for our girls winning multiple national titles is our team knows how to have fun. And in this high, in Division I cross-country, there are 330 teams. So it's not even like football where you only have maybe 80 Five, five power, five conferences. We right. either know it's going to be Ohio State, Alabama, United. Right, right, right. Across country, there's 330 teams. She is saying it's about fun. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. When we're, when we're out there fighting, we're fighting. But it's also, there's this give and take between fighting, but having fun while we're at it. Or even if things go wrong at the end of the day, let's come back to Jesus. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. And that's easier said than done. I work on it daily. But I think, hey, are we having fun in the process? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that, you know, the other thing I think of along those lines and, and having worked with a lot of clients is um, having things that are bigger than the worries of the day mm. you can rely on, right? That's another reason why this passage from Jesus is so powerful. It's another reason why I think a lot of the things we've talked about, he actually references in the book, um, the um, Atomic Habits mm-hmm. book mm-hmm. by James Great Clear, book. that we've mm-hmm. talked about a lot and in and, and this... Um, this concept of having sort of consistent rhythms inside and outside of this day. You know, you know, for example, in the moments of those stress, it helps me to remember the sun's going to come up tomorrow, right? It's kind of mm-hmm. cheesy to say that, but oh, it's well, true. Little right? Orphan Annie said it. It must be true. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the tides will continue to come in and out, right? There, there mm-hmm. is an eternal or near eternal aspect to the creation world we live in. Um, that reminds us that the troubles of today, you know, can help us keep our minds focused to, to uh, tying ourselves to rhythms and patterns that we can firmly um, attach ourselves to that go beyond, you know, the stress of the day, right? The mm-hmm. acute stress, at least, or the stre- acute stress or chronic, um, helps us attach our identity to things beyond ourselves, right? And that's what I think Jesus is getting out is, is like, where is your identity, right? Is your identity in yourself and your stuff or is your identity in your maker and who he's made you to be? And therefore, yeah. right, you don't have, um, then you can find a path, you know, and many of the tips that he provides here, right, give uh, give kind of tools on the path. But that path of identity, I think is a huge way, at least I know I work with, um, my clients, more importantly, my life, my own life with people I work with, um, in terms of not work with, I work, but just friends and my kids, right? We talk a lot about identity in our family and trying to figure out how to help them set like a healthy path for life. Mm-hmm. Um, now, two things he did not bring up in the book that I'm a little disappointed, but part mm-hmm. of this is I'm, I'm, I'm reading my own, this is Eric's point of view, how to calm your mind. And in my life, one thing that has not helped me, mm-hmm. this is just me, mm-hmm. and I'm in the middle of it's been, I don't know, four or five, six months since I've had any alcohol whatsoever. But I've looked at myself, I'm like, you know what? That was one thing I was looking at myself by drinking alcohol. It did not help me calm my mind. Not like active drinking, but the next day I'm like, man, I don't feel very good. So that was one thing. I, he didn't did he, he didn't bring up alcohol consumption in here, did he? He did a little bit. A little. Yeah, very caffeine little. and alcohol consumption mm-hmm. can have an impact on, yeah. Yeah, because no, he, he talked about it's... Um, he did. He talked about both of those are um, dopamine um, drivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So d- drinking. It, that's right. Either one of those can drive yeah, dopamine. It'll, and those are actually it'll big, drive yeah. it just a little, but mm-hmm. then it mm-hmm. has a detrimental effect. Yes, exactly. And I think yes, it's one of those things, given how yeah. many people um, drink alcohol, I think it, I, I wish our society would just at least talk about it more. Yeah. It seems to be. Which part? What do you mean? Uh, how much to drink, what it looks like, mm-hmm. what what the end results are. Or maybe I'm not in that sphere that I've heard about it a whole lot. But I've just noticed with myself, it does not help me calm my mind outside of the by actual. By not drinking. By, when I drink, it does not calm oh, my okay. mind the Got next it. day. Got it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Obviously, when I have a shot of whiskey, it 
it's great for about 60 minutes. Well, I think you would agree with that, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 you take it, and that's the, the dopamine you feel mm-hmm. it is, is sort of what makes you feel good. But because you then have an overcorrection, I think is sort of what I, how I interpret what he said, is I'm not surprised you feel bad mm-hmm. the next day. That would be very normal, is to drink a lot. And, and he doesn't get any into any cold therapy in, in the book, does he? I don't think so. Because that's been my latest thing that I've been doing for over right. a year is right. daily cold therapy has been absolutely amazing. And the research that's come out on what it does to the vagus nerve and calming things down, that's one of the things that has really helped me calm my mind is yeah. every single, not every day, probably every other day, mm-hmm. a daily ice bath, daily cold shower, mm-hmm. shower has really helped me calm my mind. So with you, what do you find you know helps you the most? Yeah, well, and before, and one that I would say is, is I think since... Um, Chris isn't here to defend himself. What I, <laughs> what I think he would say is he he lays out several things he tried. He also lays out some things in the book he tried and didn't mm-hmm. work for him, right? That's and, true. And mm-hmm. so and so everyone is different. Everyone's different. He he would recognize mm-hmm. that, right? And he would say that there's lots of things he references. There's probably lots of things he would say he didn't have time in the book to to get mm-hmm. to, and that the idea is to keep trying things and and, and sort of then measuring the results, journaling the results. Um, but I would say for me, you know, what I find in terms of many of the things he talked about is, again, back to this rhythms thing, you know, that's a big piece for me. I'm very kind of driven by daily, weekly, monthly routines, mm-hmm. um, seasonal routines. Uh, I find that, you know, when I don't take a good Sabbath every week, at least 24 hours mm. off, you know, that kind of doesn't bring the stress levels back down very well. So that's a big one for me. Um, you know, starting my day, you know, grounded in scripture and prayer and, and, and then exercise and trying to set good habits with an eat, from an eating perspective all make a big difference to contributing to um, just the ability to manage the stress load, you know, of the day. Um, and then to your point earlier, you know, even on those times when I start to feel burnout, when I already have calendared 48 hours off, even when I know I can't get there for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, mm-hmm. three months, I look ahead of these. <laughs> they happen twice a year. Um, I will look forward to them for several months because then I can at least, I hack it from my, it's just the way I'm wired. Well, it, I can it endure works a lot too. when mm-hmm. I know that I've got two weeks coming off and in particular 48 hours all to mm-hmm. myself that I'm going to take, right? And so I can endure quite a bit um, knowing that's on the calendar versus if I don't have it. Well, and you have the stressful. hope of what that exactly what that's going to be. And that's, that's right. really. That's really, really good. Yep. Well, yeah. Hey, thanks for coming to, uh, across this book. I This is, you know, one of our first books and podcasts that we've done that are pre-released. Pre-release, yeah. And uh, Josh found it because he's Mr. Productivity in terms of <laughs> as a consultant, for crying out loud, what you do for consulting uh, the businesses that you consult with. It's just amazing. So... But hey, thank you for coming across this book. I sure. like it. We've got another one coming up now, starting next week. And what in is the new ne- year? What, what is the new so book? The next end of the new year, right? So mm-hmm. this is gonna, this is this podcast. These last ones will be dropping on the twenty seventh, mm-hmm. and next one's going to be I think the third of January, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to be all the war they want by a guy named Jeff Ingalls, um, and it's going to be really all about just how to build your teams, how to how to break the rules, right? From a, both a special operations perspective, from a cybercrime perspective, it's mm-hmm. really interesting the company he's built and the way he sort of lays out these kinds. Concepts, so we're really excited. Hopefully going to get Jeff on the show. At some that point. would be amazing. So, yeah. Well, good. Look forward to that. So in the meantime, hey, go on to the consultantwithcoach.com. I do want to thank uh, the team at How to Calm Your Mind. Uh, book's going to be in the show notes. Notes. I would say, hey, go out and buy the book. Yeah, go it's, get it. It's, it's well worth, uh, whether it be $15, $20, $25, whatever it is on Amazon. It's well worth your time. Um, so go do that. And until then, have a great, great day. And a happy new year.